Welcome to St. Ruth's on this absolutely glorious mid-June Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Let's quiet our hearts and minds for just a minute or two as we prepare to worship the Lord. All hearts are open. All 
desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Page 356, the Gloria. Together. Glory to God in your highest, and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's Word. <clears throat> Our first lesson comes from the first letter of Samuel, chapter 8, verses 4 through 20, and chapter 12, verses 14 through 15. This reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles and page 218 and page 221 of your pew Bible. A reading from 1 Samuel 8, 4 through 20, 11, 4 through 15. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us, then, a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them, and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, This will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots, and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint himself commanders of thousands of commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers, courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and to his courtiers, or courtiers. 
You will be taking your male and female slaves and to the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel, they said. No, but we are determined to have a king over us, so that we will also may be like other nations, and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Continuing with chapter 11 on page 221. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord of Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 138 and can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 793 or in your online bulletin. Let us read Psalm 138 responsibly by whole verse. I will begin. Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I call and you answer me, you increase my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you. O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth, they will sing of the ways of the Lord, that the great is the Lord of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly, he perceives the high from the afar. But I walk in the midst of trouble, he keeps safe, he stretched forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his promise for me, O Lord. Your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Our second lesson comes from the second letter to the church in Corinth. Chapter 4, verses 13, verse 13 through chapter 5, verses 1. The reading starts on page 939 in the Black Pew Bible or in your online bulletin. A reading from 2 Corinthians 4.13 through 5.1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believe, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of the glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
your grandparents, your extended family, you know where else you can find help? Where? Here! Yes! Right? Look at all those people out there. You see all those folks? Everybody waving. Right? See all those folks out there? We are here to help you. All righty, he says. All right? You know what the good thing about having all that help is? To allow the brain to grow. To allow the brain to go in the right direction. And I'm here to tell you, because you're going to be needing to think about this as you're getting into high school, there is nothing, nothing, no thing that you're going to deal with in high school, all right, there's nothing that somebody in this congregation has either done themselves or heard of themselves, and all together we will help you get through all of the shenanigans that are going to take place in high school. Yeah. Right? Because high school is full of shenanigans. It is. It's like middle school, only older people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's going to be scary. It's going to be a little bit scary, but with all of the help that you have standing behind you, next to you, and guiding you, there is nothing that you can't be able to deal with in high school. You know what your biggest problem is going to be? The number one biggest issue you're going to have in high school? Algebra. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three. 
And that's the day that we're looking forward to. Amen? Right? The day that we're going to be done with all of this and we're going to be before the throne. But as we are on that journey, getting from this broken, beat up, abused body to that heavenly body, that perfect body where we all look like we think we should look with long hair that isn't gray, with faces that have no wrinkles, with bellies that are tight, with a six pack, that we're looking really good. There's a thought that sometimes crosses our mind because we know that we are sinful individuals, that we know that we have done things to upset God. Have we ever committed the unforgivable sin? Have any of you had that thought cross your mind? Has the devil ever planted that seed into your head? You know what? You are so bad that because of this sin, because of this lifestyle, because of these actions, because of this ongoing stuff, that God's going to ultimately turn his back on you. You have committed the unforgivable sin. Have any of you been asked that question as a person who is asking you because they see the light and joy that comes inside of you, even though there may be some doubt? What if I have done the unforgivable sin? Is there something that can happen that is so bad that God can't forgive? Well, in our gospel lesson, Jesus kind of answers that. But to answer that, we've got to talk about what that unforgivable sin is. More accurately, what it is not. The unforgivable sin is not a thoughtless mistake. The unforgivable sin is not a thoughtless mistake. We all make mistakes. Okay? Sometimes we make them knowingly, sometimes we make them unknowingly. Right? But the unforgivable sin is not something that just flitters in and out of our lives. The unforgivable sin is something that we know we have been convicted of that we still consistently do over and over again. It is that one kind of sin that we know that we do consistently over and over that we have forgotten and ignoring and refusing to confess. Now, if there is sin in our lives that we know that we're doing, that we confess, and we still continue doing it, that does not put it in the unforgivable sin category. Because at least if we know it, and we're trying so hard, and we continue to do it, and we're praying about it, and it still comes back, at least the Holy Spirit is still working in and through us. It's coming up against that hard wall of ego and self. And we all have ego and we all have self. But at least the Holy Spirit is still moving in our lives. So that is not the unforgivable sin. The unforgivable sin is a sense of a progressive rejection. Something that starts little and continues to grow in our lives. In our gospel story, we talk about the scribes. And it's the scribes of the people that Jesus is, is addressing in our story. Let's take a look at, for just a second at the lives of the scribes. These are people whose whole job and existence was to write the law, write the history of the Israelites, write the Hebrew Bible by hand. Over and over and over again. I'm trying to think of a modern example of something that we write over and over and over again that we would know as well as the scribes. And the only thing that comes to mind is our signature. But if you take a look at your signature in high school and your signature now, I suspect they will have slight differed slightly. 
Okay. Um, I can't read my signature in high school. I can't read my signature now. But <laughs> this is the only thing that we write. Where we go, hush. <laughs> <laughs> when the scribes are writing the Hebrew Bible, they have to write it perfectly each time. Every letter, every dot had to be in the exact correct place for the history to be accurate down through time. So these scribes had it down to an art. They knew all the prophecies. They knew everything that they needed to know. They had copied Isaiah 53, which talks about the suffering servant. They had copied Psalm 22, which talks about the death of the Messiah. They had copied Micah 5, which were the prophecies of the Messiah's birth. And they had done it over and over. So they knew what was going to take place. They knew it because they had seen it through their entire lives. But yet, when coming face to face with the living Messiah, their hearts had been so hardened against a living God, a breathing God, a God that not only fulfilled all of the prophecies, but took the prophecies to a whole new level that they couldn't see that God was right in front of them, that the Messiah was there. And they couldn't let go of what they thought they knew to embrace what they should have known. Their hearts were hardened and they refused to see. It was a progression of thought. We can know we're doing something, we can know what we're to do so well that when it comes to us, we can't see to do it. Any of you have seen the movie The Book of Eli? Denzel Washington. Yeah. Good movie. Synopsis. Denzel Washington was in a post-apocalyptic world and he had been given a vision to take a book that he had found, the last copy of a book that he had found, and he was to walk west with this book until he could find a place where it was safe. Now, as he is walking for 30 years, he has walked with this book. He has read this book every day for 30 years, and he had this vision in his head as to what he's supposed to do with this book, that all along the way, he failed to put into play what the book had told him he needed to do with the book. He was convinced that his only mission was to get the book from point A to point B and not live it out, which is what he had read the book tell him to do. And at the end of the day, when he finally realized what his purpose was, as it were, his eyes got open. Even though you find out at the end of the movie, he was blind the entire time. Have we been walking with the book so close? Have we been reading it so deep? Have we tried to get it inside us so internally that we have forgotten how to live the book in reality. When that happens, then we may become guilty of the unforgivable sin. Because the unforgivable sin, when it boils down to, is rejecting who Jesus is, rejecting the Holy Spirit that guides us, and doing it from a place that is so ingrained that we absolutely refuse to do what God is telling us to do. Not only in our walk, but in our acknowledgement and acceptance of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us. That, my brothers and sisters, is the unforgivable sin. Now, I'm going to make a leap here, and I'm going to make an assumption. I'm going to assume.
assume, and you know what assume stands for, that if you have thought you have created and done the unforgivable sin, then you have not. Because if the Holy Spirit is still moving in in your life, and still trying to convict you of things that at some point in time you will need to decide sooner or later, confess and give up. If the Holy Spirit is still moving, then you're good to go. If you have asked the question and it has bothered you just a little bit, you have not committed it because the Spirit is still alive and well in your life. They accuse Jesus of having an unclean spirit. They accuse Jesus of denying that which descended upon him like a dove at his baptism. And they have rejected both God, Father, God, Son, and God, Holy Spirit. And there doesn't appear to be any circumstances in our readings where that is going to change. My brothers and sisters, I tell you this to assure you that there's hope. <laughs> that we're not so far gone that God can't forgive, won't forgive, doesn't forgive. We need to remember that that Holy Spirit is still speaking to us each and every day. That Holy Spirit is still working in us so that we can be the best person, be who God wants us to be here and now. <coughs> and as long as we continue to do that and continue to strive to surrender our will, to surrender, <coughs> break down our walls so that God can move in and through us. As long as we continue to confess that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead. That when we get tired and groaning <coughs> and these aches and pains are finally done. When we stand before the judge. After that moment where the enemy comes up and tries to accuse us and tries to claim us for his own. We will hear that words that we all long to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You have finished the race. Let me show you to your room. Let me show you to your dwelling place. Together with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Turning to page 358 in the Red Book of Common Prayer, page 358, let us stand and affirm what we know to be true as written for us in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. When I ask you, my brothers and sisters, what do you believe? Page 358. Together, we believe in one God. The Father is the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from the true God, begotten of our faith, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. No 
mercy. Please add your own intercessions and thanksgivings at this time, either silently or aloud. Thank you for the healing that you've done in Stephanie and her shoulder and your body. I pray that you continue, that you would continue that healing and, and strengthen her arm and shoulder so that she wouldn't be injured again. I pray for Jerry and for strength and healing and comfort and glory for patience and peace. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Luke and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us those things which we need to confess privately before we continue with our public corporate confession. together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. You did. But you did it. Oh. Oh, yeah. that, that probably had as much to do with yesterday. Yeah. You're going to help me set the table, right? Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Why don't you go up and have a seat? All right, enough of that piece. Have a seat. All righty. Bulletin. Open. Two-sided. 
Read, mark, learn, inwardly digested, so I don't have to read it to you. The only thing that is, uh, I would like to emphasize is that we are not doing our uh, regular, we're not doing the, uh, what it means to be an Episcopalian right now. We're back into our regular Old Testament study. We will pick up to what it means to be an Episcopalian in July. We did it during Lent. There was a whole bunch of people who enjoyed it during Lent. And as soon as I got done with it, there were another group of people asking me when I was going to start doing it. After we had already done it. So we're going to start it all over. We're going to do it in July. So if you've got any questions, uh, please pay attention to the bulletin because we'll let you know when we will start that back up uh, for any newcomers to the church. Birthdays and anniversaries. Oh, I know you're not coming down here by yourself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> Birthday. I kind of figure it's being solid. You don't want anybody to know that you're 82? <laughs> <laughs> I say 82, I have a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, should all, we should all be looking so good and be so spry at 82. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And who's this handsome gentleman with you? Oh, he's my favorite husband. Your favorite husband? Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 we're not Mormons. We don't believe in church. And they've been married a hundred. You've been married for as long as the church has been around. Yes. Oh. Yes. 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 As long as the last. We should have. They've been married 106 years <laughs> combined. Combined. <laughs> <laughs> a cumulative number. A cumulative number. Yes. <laughs> don't. Don't. Don't smile and snod yeah, yeah, and say, okay. yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday. Over. Who are you? Lois Fordon. Everybody say, hi, Lois. Hi, Lois. 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 Lois.
pre sermon stuff? Well, I feel like the enemy is trying to derail me. Okay, we can, we can do that. Right after I announce that there's a vestry meeting right after service today. Um, so if you have any business before the church and you want to bring some stuff up, please come uh, to the vestry meeting. And last night we had kind of a healing service. We had a number of people who have been challenged with cancers that we anointed and laid hands on before. And be advised that this priest will always stop and anoint and pray at any point in time for anybody who needs it. Okay? So if there's something going on in your life and the Spirit says, I need some anointing, I need some prayer, I need some protection, this priest will always do it. Ote. Okay, well, I'll need your permission because I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I got a big one. Well, given, given who I'm anointing, I need the biggest bottle I can find. So please extend your hands forward and join with me in prayer. Lorenzo, I anoint you with holy oil for protection and healing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As you are outwardly anointed with this holy oil, may you feel the inward presence and healing of the Holy Spirit. May the Spirit guide, guard, and protect you. And Lord, we know that our enemy attacks us when we're about to do mighty things. We know that when we are following, the Spirit hates us. We just pray that you would be with this your child and servant. As he walks the days in his discernment towards ordination. Be with him this day. Protect him, guide him, surround him. In his public life and in his private life. Show him the way he should go and give him the strength and courage to pursue. Hold him in your arms, we pray this day. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. I got it out. Anybody else? And it doesn't have to be public. We can do it privately. All right, now. Yeah. We got a prayer service going on in here. Yes, sir. Back pain. Oh, I don't have a big enough bottle. Back pain. I could be anointed all day. You know, you can what I'm saying. Good. Please extend your hands, Lord, and Richard, and join with me in prayer. Draw that anointing with holy oil for healing and protection. 
brothers and sisters, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
gifts of God for the people of God, think in remembering that Jesus Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been said, he is our host and we are his guests. The table is open to any who are hungry, all who are thirsty are welcome to receive from this table.
you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Please stand for our processional, recessional hymn. <laughs>